Okay, so I'd like to invite to the stand Robert Kremer, who um, is from the USDA ARS, and we'll be talking about <coughs> soil health improvement in an organic orchard production system in northwest Missouri. All right, thank you. Um, as a point of clarification, I, I have retired from USDA ARS from about six months ago, so I'm, I'm experiencing a new kind of freedom. Um, so when I was with the government, we, we, would, um, we had a lot of surveys going on with what we would call the soil resource management, and I've had an opportunity to uh, assess soil quality on, on many systems, a lot of the big conventional systems, but, but I was fortunate to be invited to look at an organic system in northwest Missouri some years ago, and I've been tracking the um, various soil parameters on that since about 2003, and I'm going to report on a little part of that today. Uh, Prairie Birthday Farm, where does that name come from? Well, it comes from a statement in Leopold Sand County Almanac about the, there's always a birthday on the prairie uh, to, or something to that extent, so that's the reason for the name. This farm is a rather what I would call an ecologically uh, uh, based agriculture. I'm not going to go through all the descriptions, but but it is, it is a very multifunctional type uh, farm. Um, many many different small enterprises on it specializes in uh, heirloom and heritage uh, crops and uh, poultry, uh, servicing special um, markets in the Kansas City area. Uh, this uh, this farm is located in uh, in the the deep less hills of the Missouri River bottom, uh, very potentially f fertile soils, but because they they are sloping, they're highly erosive. And on this particular farm, um, it was uh, very intensively cultivated many years. In fact, in some uh, sites on this farm, maybe only uh, five centimeters or less of topsoil was left after intensive row cropping uh, in the 80s and 90s. It um, has a mollusol, uh, and uh, when, when the, the current owners purchased it, it was under cool season grass, primarily uh, fescue. And as um, most, of the, most of the farm is, um, is under the same soil, uh, soil uh, series, the, the uh, Sharpsburg sill loam, the orchard that we'll be discussing is on the uh, on your right upper right there. You can see some of the trees there. And then, as a um, reference, there is a reconstructed prairie in the uh, lower right hand corner as well that, that we use. Uh, this just gives you a little idea of some of the the uh, diversity of of the crop production there uh, with the. Um, anywhere from grapes to fruit to eggs and the prairie. Uh, some shots of her reconstructed prairie after about, uh, uh, since about 1996 when they established that, or 1995, uh, done a very good job. Didn't use any chemicals. It was mainly burning, uh, uh, intensive grazing. Um, no Roundup was used to establish this, this uh, a pretty nice looking prairie at this point of, of native grasses and forbs. So uh, a lot of the um, uh, different areas are uh, treated with composts and mulches. The, the composts are produced on site, and, and as we just heard earlier this morning, um, this farmer uses a cold comp composting process uh, with uh, materials that are on farm so that she doesn't have to introduce uh, a lot of off-farm uh, products. Okay, so this is what the orchard looks like um, uh, in in the summer. It's it, it looks it looks fairly rough because what what they're doing is they're incorporating these native uh, plants in the alley rather than keeping it down or having it uh, vegetated with with fescue or some other cool season grass, uh, allowing the um, uh, plants to to proliferate in, in this manner because it not only is protecting soil and, and providing organic matter, but it's also a source of, uh, of pollinators and uh, uh, nectar for her honeybee production as well. Uh, so, so we imposed an experiment on top over this, uh, looking at uh, the, the near the trees where, where the, they're kept weed free, but um, a lot of uh, composting and mulching is going on there, as you can see. Uh, 
compost applications to the alleys, which uh, is another uh, so-called treatment. Uh, you know how it is when you go on farm with somebody, you have to kind of uh, you know, be very flexible as to whatever experimental design that you impose on this. Uh, and then uh, halfway through, um, when we were doing this, she decided to start adding some biochar with, with the compost as well. So about half of those alleys are treated with, with biochar, so that's kind of a sub, subplot treatment. <clears throat> this uh, orchard is burned uh, every year. In fact, I think she's going to burn this in the next few days if it uh, snows not too deep. Um, and uh, this way, uh, it is uh, prepared for the growing season, as you can see. And then later on in the summer, she has very good growth. The trees are not damaged uh, due to the, uh, to the burning since it is done while they're still dormant. So, so why are we using uh, these native plants? Well, if you look at the picture there on, on the left, uh, these, this is a root system of warm season grass, uh, Indian grass, and uh, those roots are going down to a depth of 60 feet. And as those roots penetrate the soil profile, it's releasing a, 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 a large amount of carbon into it. If you recall, some plants will release anywhere from 20 to maybe up to 50 percent of their carbon that is fixed through photosynthesis through the roots into the soil. And this really develops that microbial community, uh, brings carbon into the soil, Bring, uh, building up the organic matter sequestering carbon. Um, you know, this is why we have the black soils that we see in the upper northwest or up in the north central part of the United States. Compared to the other uh, profile there of a corn plant, and of course uh, we'll have to admit that this is on a rather um, high clay soil so the, the roots aren't penetrating very deep, but this is in the same soil. Uh, that that prairie grass is rooted in. So you can see that this particular corn variety is not doing a very good job of penetrating the soil. So that, but, the, you know, the, the bottom line is these deep-rooted plants are uh, really remediating the soil after that intensive tillage, helping build up organic matter in a natural way, and thereby this benefits the other crops such as the orchard trees that are growing on this site. Don't want to get into a soil health lecture, but I, put, I show these two profiles here just to remind us that when we look at soil health or soil quality, we want to look at it in comparing management systems on a particular landscape in, in the vicinity in associated soils. In other words, we don't want to compare a Missouri soil to a, to a uh, Iowa soil. It would be very presumptuous of me to do that. So we just want to keep that in mind. Um, also, uh, one of the other aspects of the, using these plants in an in a integrated system like this is improving microbial diversity, as we just heard uh, earlier uh, from the earlier speaker. We want to get this microbial diversity back in the soil because uh, it, they drive the multiple functions that are going on, nutrient cycling, decomposition, carbon sequestration that is required in order to have a fully functional system. So it's not only just the taxonomic diversity that we're seeing here, it's also the functional diversity and all the processes that are going on. And this is part of the thing, uh, uh, some of the items that we were uh, measuring as well. Um, just a shot to show you, well, this is how it all works together hypothetically in a block of soil with, with, within the rhizosphere. I'm sure you all have seen this figure before. All right, so what was the, uh, uh, the, the plan here? Uh, we looked at as I mentioned previously, we looked at several treatments within the organic orchard, uh, within the tree row, the alley, the alley with or without biochar. Uh, then we had a non-treated orchard, which was basically uh, some trees that were planted with the, within a fescue alley, cool season grass. Uh, the reconstructed prairie we used as a non-tree check reference. Let's see what would happen when the grass was there without the uh, trees. And a couple of treatments I don't have there, um, we looked at an unmanaged pasture, which represented um, a conventional system, so to speak, and then also a conventionally tilled system that was corn soybean rotation tilled every year. Some of the soil health indicators we looked at were plant nutrients, organic carbon, total nitrogen, water stable aggregation. Uh, but we primarily focused on biological assays, uh, some of the en soil enzymes a microbial community using a phospholipid fatty acid assay, which basically is looking at extracts from soil 
uh, looking at the phospholipids, which are constituents of the uh, cellular membrane and cell walls of microorganisms, and then looking at certain patterns of those types of fatty acids would then uh, designate a particular group of microorganisms in the soil. So it's, a, it's, it's not the finest uh, uh, analysis that you might use if you had uh, you, you used molecular analysis, but at least it gives you some coarse groups to look at of microorganisms in a fairly uh, a quick way. So the, the whole picture here, this is from a diagram that the uh, people at the former soil health lab at Iowa State use in, in their soil health index model, is to look at all three properties of soil, uh, physical, chemical, and biological. Uh, most of these are, are fairly e easily uh, 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 measured, but the, the, the part that is least um, focused on is the biological components. There's only a few biological indicators that, that are used in this model because it's very difficult to go to the field and measure these. And so uh, we're looking at enzyme activities, the microbial community, to eventually perhaps use that as a potential indicator in this model. As it is right now, there's only about anywhere from 16 to 19 indicators that can be plugged into that model and only three or four are related to biological activity. Uh, so uh, what does the organic matter build up over the years in the reconstructed period it looks like this. It's, uh, it, it's not bad. It, obviously it doesn't happen overnight. We did get some good uh, organic uh, carbon buildup uh, over this 10-year uh, period. Um, and, that's just, and this is actually uh, very good considering that uh, that site was the most uh, eroded site on the farm. Okay, so uh, on the bottom of the axis here, I, I show the various treatments from the non-treated orchard, the organic orchard. Notice in the middle the organic uh, alleys and organic alley plus biochar. The reconstructive prairie, then there's the unmanaged grass, and the final one on the right is a continuous cultivated site. This is the activity for a nitrogen cycling enzyme called glucosaminidase. It basically releases nitrogen from, the, from chitin in soil. It's a very good index uh, for soil health. And, and as you can see that uh, in, the, in the, each of the, the, the clusters, rep, each of the bars represent a year. Um, the organic uh, orchard and alley and the one with the biochar look, look very uh, have very good activity in this, and, and of course you have to remember this was established back in 2000, uh, about 2000 or so, so we're only coming in here at 2008 or 9 when that biochar is starting to be uh, um, applied, and, and of course it already had a head start, but it does show some good activity due to the organic management. Um, and we're, we can see, you know, the relationship between soil organic carbon and the activity. You can make these kinds of relationships and show that there is an effect uh, due to this particular treatment. Um, till versus the continuous vegetative uh, uh, cover. Uh, look at soil aggregate stability, still a, a similar pattern. And now it's interesting that in the unmanaged grass we do have some, uh, you know, the, the aggregation is fairly high there, but you know, we're, you have a perennial cover in that case, and you expect some aggregation to occur, uh, whether you have uh, uh, native grasses or not. And of course, this is that rather shallow uh, sampling. We didn't go in depth at this point. It may be different when we go deeper, but you you would notice the continuous. Uh, cultivated site is very low every year, and, and, and again, it's because of the tillage and, and no cover crop going on in that particular system. All right, what about the microbial uh, structure and, and, the, and the composition? This gives you, shows the overall total phospholipid fatty acid content in the soil, which is an index of the microbial biomass carbon. You can use, there are some conversion factors that can be used. It's a little bit easier than setting up fumigation experiments in the lab to come up with this. But again, you see a similar pattern with the, uh, where the organic uh, treatments are in place. We have a, a seemingly higher microbial biomass occurring, especially in the, in the biochar. And in the biochar, I might want to mention that this is a long-term um, effect. Uh, we don't see this when you just add biochar to the soil in the first year or second year. It takes some time for that biochar to become activated. And one of the things, you know, it's putting the bio in biochar, right? So, um, so one of the things that, that this farmer does is combine biochar with her 
compost, and that kind of activates it and then that applies that to the uh, prairie uh, soil, and, and this helps uh, stimulate the microbes already in the soil. So I think that's what we're seeing with that bump in biomass there. Now, if you look at the constituents of, that we detect in PLFA, and by the way, this is we've only done this for two years because we had the we've only had the soil uh, uh, PLFA system set up, and I'm showing you one year here. Um, again, these are the different components, uh, and if you go look at the the, the bars from um, from uh, left to right, uh, gram negative, gram positive bacteria, actinos, fungi. The one I'd like to point out mostly is the uh, second to last bar, which is a vesicular or vascular mycorrhizae, a little inset that I show you there. Those partic that particular uh, portion of the fungi have, have increased considerably in the um, organic alleys, in the organic alley with the biochar, as well as in the restored prairie or the reconstructed prairie. So, you know, this, this is a soil that had been um, pretty much deteriorated. A lot of the mycorrhizae had... Um, had probably been been depleted. Uh, this shows that this particular approach is helping build up that component as well as some of the microbial groups, as you can, or the bacterial groups that you can see here, which are also very important in in plant growth uh, inter interactions and uh, uh, suppressing uh, d diseases and and that kind of thing. Okay, so uh, again, you know, it, we, we have to look at all these functions together to come up with an index. The hope is that we can uh, apply a model to this and, 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 and develop some indexes, not just to say, oh, well, yeah, look, look what we did. Uh, we, we can quantitate this, but it's mainly to validate the fact that, yes, th this particular management system is having impact. It, 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 the management seems to improve the soil. Uh, considerably better than, than a lot of the other conventional systems that we have in the nearby area. And we have done some of this uh, across the, 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 uh, the northern half of, of the state of Missouri, and, 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 I, and I'm just showing this, this as a pictorial, that when we run these uh, models and we come up with these indexes, uh, it does show that uh, you know, the, the monoculture, the cultivated sites are, are always ranked lower. Uh, indicating that there is some um, uh, room for improved management, but the uh, other uh, more perennial systems, the one organic pasture site that we've rated, the oyster rates uh, fairly high on, on this scale. Uh, so, and, and to finish up here, you know, the, the microbial community within the, this ecological management system it seems to be more effective in mediating biological processes to achieve soil health and to impact fruit production. It's likely that this will uh, contribute to higher quality fruit, but we don't have that data yet that that is going on. We hope to correlate soil health with fruit quality. Um, that, that is a current research focus at this, at this farm. Um, I, think, I think with that, I'll, I'll quit. There's a few other slides there, some website uh, that, that are, is in that handout that is for your, uh, for your reading entertainment. Thank you. All right, questions? Bob, those results with organic matter accumulation were phenomenal, Unbe almost unbelievable that you managed to increase it so much. How much compost was being added into those systems? Uh, good question. Uh, she, the, the compost, the, the rates that I roughly calculated are probably anywhere from 10 to 20 tons to the acre. And, and so you, you've got to understand this is not a large-scale operation. So she can afford to, to put on a lot of amendments like that. Um, and um, also mulching. A lot of mulching goes on uh, with various things. Uh, uh, very very uh, innovative. She, she's looking at, at using um, you know, filter paper from uh, from an organic brewery in Kansas City as a mulch, and it, but it, it's basically cellulose filters, and they eventually break down and, and add to the organic matter in that way. Um, with the re reconstructed prairie, uh, a lot of that is just um, a, a lot of vegetative accumulation over the close to 20-year period now. That uh, you know, it's not grazed, it's not hayed, it's burned every other year. So. Um, 
Uh, yes, I, I agree. I was surprised. Uh, we run the numbers all the time. There's sometimes I'm getting over six to eight percent organic matter accumulation. No, no I agree. It's a big I, question mark. I have. Yeah, it is. And, and you know, one of the things I neglected to mention, we do track uh, tissue analysis of, of these trees and fruit as well. I just didn't bring that up, but but yeah, to tie that all together, that 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 will be important. Hi there, I have two questions. The first one is really quick. On your bar graphs, your treatment all the way on the right, that's CC. What does that stand for? I'm sorry, that meant cult continuous cultivation, corn, soybean rotation. That's just, it, it would be, represent your con so-called conventional uh, crop production. Okay, thanks a lot. And then also, you measured all these soil health indicators. Did you measure any yield indicators? Just to sh This may be a right on the coattails because you have these farmers who are looking to increase environmental sustainability but they want to know that they're not sacrificing economic sustainability at the same time no no good question this is something I've tried to work with this farmer to get for years and it's it's one of the situations when you work with with a farmer to, to, to get that information and, and I've got I've got scattered yield data. She, you know, she's had some tr trouble with uh, controlling some particular pests and things. So I, I, I really, you know, I can't say that I have good yield data at this point. Uh, regarding the uh, microbe health in the soil, I've seen uh, folks use plastic bags to where they'll take, you know, a control from an area and then go over to an area that has perceived more microbe density in the soil and they just put it in a plastic bag and they let it sit and uh, the one with more microbial health will respirate more and uh, you know they need to breathe to live just like the plants do and just like we do so the uh, amount of condensation on the uh, bag is a good indicator of what's what you know not very specific but <laughs> it's you know it's a general and uh, you know very direct indicator of how uh, the soil is behaving. No, thanks. That, uh, if that so helps. Soil respiration is uh, is one of the, the measurements that people have been towing with. And there, there are several approaches, and certainly that would be a unique one. All right. Thank you so much.